Well, <laughs> my accomplishments. I, I, I mean, I've been a DJ. I've been into music since like 1978, a long time ago. And uh, I was like a, 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 a DJ, just as kind of a fun thing, really, like gonna you know, uh, do it when I could do it in the 80s. Uh, then I met up with a guy called Jeff Barrow, who was starting a band called Porter's Head. Uh, I was supplying samples for the band Porter's Head, and then we went on tour. I became the tour DJ for Porter's Head, went around the world twice, uh, being the warm up DJ. I ended up doing like all the uh, uh, Radio things, port said, so like the Radio One Essential Mix and various other radio things uh, that was associated with port said. And then I did a, a mix CD called The Document, which came out in 1998, mixing up various you know, hip hop and soul and funk and rock and whatever. And uh, and I've managed to you know have a, a career out of being a DJ since uh, that since then, really 1998. You know, so it's uh, it's been wonderful. I've, I've enjoyed it. <laughs> yes, you've had a very long and successful DJ career. But what is it that got you into Norman Soul? Well, you know, I was thinking about this because uh, I think the first, uh, the first time I was aware of Northern Soul was actually I was DJing in a club in Bristol uh, called Misty's, on uh, which is on Park Street, halfway up Park Street on the right. I don't know what it is now. I'm just, something else. I'm sure now. And I used to play like uh, pop pop music of the day, basically. Uh, I was basically saving up money to buy a set of Technics 1210s, 1200s actually, but when I got to the shop, they were like, you want these black ones? I'm like, ooh, black ones, these are new. I'll take black ones. But I wanted 1200s at the time. So basically, I was working in this club on a Friday and Saturday, and there was a couple of mods that used to come into this club, and they were like, have you got any Northern Soul? And I was like, Oh, Northern Soul, yeah, well, let me look into that, you know. And I got a couple of, like, chess compilations, so I would play, like, Wade in the Water and stuff like that, and Landslide, you know. This is this was, like, 1985 and 86, and I thought, oh, yeah, I quite, I quite like these tunes. They're really nice. I can play it amongst the pop stuff, dross that I used to have to play. Um, but, then, but then, you know, I was always trying to find samples. I'm a, a, my... my thing when you know with Porter said I was always trying to find samples to feed to Jeff so that you could play with you know use for the Porter said tracks so I would always be in a record shop with my portable turntable and I'd be just listening and I would just think oh what's that was some chess or that's good or that's on you know good label and, and I would I remember, I remember listening to um, uh, In Orbit by Joe Lovejoy in, in, in a, a, a record shop somewhere and thinking well that you know that's not really a sample but oh what a, Oh, great vocal! That, that's a that's a wonderful record. I I really like that. I'm going to buy that anyway because I like that. You know, this was a late '80s probably, and uh, and and then and then I just kind of researched and found out more about Northern Soul and and uh, and I just realised that I just loved this music that was called Northern Soul. I mean, I didn't go to any uh, like all nighters or anything that were going on particularly but I, I was kind of aware and I'd read you think is I'd read about it I'd, re I'd, I'd buy like soul mate like blues and soul and I'd, and I'd you know I'd be reading about oh brass con new brass construction oh great and the new fat back but, and then I'd read the northern soul page and I'd like well I didn't really know about this thing called northern soul but they're all talking about these soul records I don't know but I so I would be kind of aware of it and I'd, and I'd listen to radio I'd listen to um uh, there's a radio uh, station called Seven Sound, which came out of uh, Gloucestershire, uh, with a, a guy called Jerry Hipkiss, and he would play like so. He play like modern soul records of the time. So I'd be recording like street soul records of the time, thinking, "Oh, that's a great tune." And then he would play. He'd have a little section where he'd play some like, you know, like maybe ten minutes of Northern. I'm like, "Oh," and I'd keep my TDK running. I'm like, "Oh, okay, yeah, these are these are cool tunes." Because I, I don't know when I was young, I just wanted to assim assimilate music. I just wanted all music when i was into music in the late 70s i would like there would be a friend of mine that would be into like heavy metal and i'd be like i want can you just give me a cassette of that like motorhead album i want can you just give me a cassette of that like specials because i like the two-tone and he, and then i had a mate who's like jazz and i was like can you give me a cassette of that like you know um i don't know like uh just crazy uh Herbie man album and just man i just wanted to assimilate i just wanted to find out about music. I was like a sponge really in those days. Yeah. So I always wanted to know about stuff. Um, 
so, so it wasn't until later on, uh, I, I don't know, probably in the early 90s, when I, when I, when I, collect, I, I managed to go assimilate, if you like, loads of Northern Soul 45s that I bought. And they were, I, mean, I was touring, so I was touring Port Said across America and everywhere around the world. And I was everywhere I would go, I would go to record shops and buy records. That's all I did every day. So I would, I would find Northern tunes. You know, and think, oh, I've got a great collection now. I, I really, I'd really like to do a night of, 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 of playing this stuff because I think it's great music, and I don't know if many people know about it. I know that the Northern Soul scene existed, but I wasn't really part of that. Um, but then I started doing a night in London at the Jazz Cafe because uh, they, because the Jazz Cafe, you know, used to have like Martha Reeves would play, and I knew the guy who used to book DJs at the Jazz Cafe, and I was like, well, you know, can I play before Martha? Yeah, great, and you played before Martha Reeves, and I thought, oh, great. So I used to do nights at the Jazz Cafe doing an old soul thing, and 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 it's because of that that uh, Keb Dodge. Who used to do Madame Jojo's? Who was doing his funk thing and then on the Friday night at Madame Jojo's? Then uh, basically got offered the Saturday night at Madame Jojo's to do a uh, more of a Northern Soul uh, uh, blues R and B kind of night. And he's like, but they said to him, you you got to do it with somebody else. So Kev basically got me to do it because he knew about I was doing the, the, the Northern Soul Night at the Jazz Cafe he, he thought oh I'll, I'll get Andy to do it he actually thought that he would and I don't know if you know Kev Dodge but <laughs> Kev Dodge is a mad character I think he thought that he'd, he would annoy me within six months and I'd leave but I ended up staying there for nine years uh, and I eclipsed even him and I, I, uh, so I did it with him for seven years and then when he left I did it with another guy Dave Crozier for two years um, and, and we would play Northern Soul with, with, with 50s R&B or Jump Blues and Blues and, and and rockabilly and a, a bit scar in the early days, and mixing it up, you know, and uh, and I just I just love just love playing playing that music, you know, and I, and I never got asked to do uh, like northern soul proper northern soul gigs. Be I mean, because I, I admit to you, I, I am not the OVO man. I hate. OVO. I, I'll say that now. I hate OVO. I think we're, OVO we're okay. is absolute. We're not. And people will hate me for saying that, and they'll probably stop watching this now. But I don't. I, I don't give a monkey's if. It, I, I. Do you know what? I have. I have had the original of a record, and and a reissue or a dub plate. Sometimes I used to. I used to cut dub plates of, of seven inches because I couldn't afford a thousand pounds. But I cut a dub plate of it so that I could play it at Madame Jojo's, and I had a dub plate. And then I sometimes I'd have the original, and I would sell the original because it doesn't sound as good as a dub plate because I want it to sound good in a club and and, and, I'd, and I'd rather sell the original and for silly money if somebody was paying us some money for it if I, you, you you some Japanese character you can have the original blah 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 lovely and I would just want I mean I love playing vinyl don't get me wrong I love playing vinyl seven inches I love it seven inches is the way you should hear music I think but I don't give a monkey's about it being in the original. I would say, like, in the last 20 years, in all the gigs I've done all around the world, uh, you know, whether it be America, Australia, like, wherever I've played, I have always tried to play Northern Soul, and I've always tried and slipped in a few Northern Soul tunes. Always, wherever I've played. Because even if it's there was a time or just something, you take, even take your love, just get a couple of bits in. And now you're asking me to come back to Bristol where I started DJing to just play Northern. It's just like, it feels like I'm coming back around again to like, people actually, they, 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 they're loving what I was trying to do for years and years. I mean, it was hard because sometimes people didn't really want to hear it, but wow, you, <laughs> you want me to they, come back to Bristol? They want to hear it now. They do, they seem to. It's sold out. What a great thing. And what you, your night that you do is absolutely amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't do, I don't do any Northern Soul nights because, I, like I said, I, I don't get asked to do it because I don't play OVO. So nobody will ever ask me to do a Northern Soul night. So the only nights I ever do play Northern Soul are things that I've done myself where I will get, well, I can't get Kev to play because he plays Garage now, but I get, Guy Hennigan to play in my Northern night, or I get somebody that I know to play it, and we we'll play Northern. Uh, so you know, I, 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 I rarely kind of do Northern nights really, but but it's great the way that people seem to love it now. I just like to see, I mean, it's just people appreciating these wonderful records. They, these are these are timeless records. 
they they will sound good in 100 years time 200 years time these records will sound great i think i mean some records have a have a, have a, have a, a tiny lifespan that are, i mean great but maybe they will sound tired after a while all the soul records just sound great forever i believe I, and i don't think they will ever sound not great Really? Great. Great. <laughs> ah, well, I mean, to a new vinyl collector, <laughs> buy, buy reissues. I, I, I mean, there's some great reissues. You don't need to pay stupid money for, for crazy originals. Um, and if you want something that hasn't been reissued, go to vinylcarvers.com, send them an MP3 or a WAV file, and they'll cut you with something that's worth 2,000 pounds, and it costs you 10 pounds, and you can play it on a Carvers. And, I don't care, and people in the crowd won't, well tonight I assume they won't care, some people might care, but you know, you, you know if you, you want to be a DJ playing that stuff, do that man, do that, who cares? My most prized Northern set. well the, the, uh, the record that I, <laughs> that I probably heard, he probably, Kev probably played it, I mean, often when I was at JoJo's and Keb would play a record, I'd be like, "Oh, I better cut that on a on a on a vinyl covers." But there was a couple where I'm going to get the original of that because I love it so much, and I think uh, that's the way by the queue. I yeah. I just went. I'm just going to buy that, and I just 150 quid, 160 quid, whatever it was, and I bought it. I think I got it with me actually, and I just bought the original. I just thought I just love that so much. I don't, I can't, I can't be, but I can't wait for the final covers to come back. I'm just going to buy original. So that's like the way by the queue. I have got it with me tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. New Orleans, okay. New Orleans, stomping New Orleans. Love it. Okay. Euphoria. Euphoria. I love, lo you know, I love disco, hip hop, di you know, uh, so, uh, so reggae. I love so much, so many different forms of music. And I love going out and hearing so many different forms of music. I love to be in a reggae jam, listen to reggae. I love to be in a disco, listen to disco, hip hop, getting into the hip hop jams. There's nothing like being in a club and you hear that Northern tune and you're like, oh, that is taking me somewhere else. And, and, and you just go, you just, you're just gone. If you're talking to somebody, you're like, sorry, sorry, I'm not talking to you anymore. I gotta go, sorry, sorry, I'll talk to you in a minute. You're gone. Your three minutes of your life are consumed by this euphoria that no other piece of music would take, would take you, I believe. <laughs> thank you so much, Andy. Thank you for coming to talk to us. Thank you. Really forward so much to hearing your sets. Oh, thank you.